Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to a video. So today what we're going to do is we're actually going to look at this book. I wanted to show you guys my new pieces really quick because I think in some ways it does actually tie in to um, my art. So uh, we're going to look at the artwork of Berserk by Mira Kentaro. Uh, I call him Kentaro Mira. But uh, give me one sec. I just want to show these pieces because I think that, that I'm trying to obviously build an audience that... that knows my work and sees my art and stuff like that. And, um, you know, when I do videos like this, I mean, I do think it's important for me to like, kind of like let people know, Hey, I'm actually an artist. Cause some people go, I only see you like reviewing, um, work. Like, you know, I didn't know you drew. So this is a piece that I did last week. Um, this is my character blaster kid. I don't want to get too much into the story right now, but, um, I'm doing, um, a series of pieces I call lore and lore is basically background on a brand new comic book. I'm going to be crowdfunding it next month and I'd really love your support. So these pieces are incredibly important to get the word out to people that I'm really serious. So this is, um, hand drawn pen and ink, um, little bit of wash on the board. I, what I do is I pencil the piece, throw wash on the board before I, um, ink it. Um, so it's, it's a tricky thing to do because you, you have to kind of have an idea of where you're going to put your lights and darks and stuff like that. Um, and, uh, you know, you can see this on my Instagram or on, um, Facebook. So this next piece is, uh, I have these, the, and this is Junji Ito inspired, obviously. This is um, a, a character, they're, they're ghost children from the war that are um, like haunted beings that actually sort of patrol the forests and swamps and stuff like that. Very, very dangerous. Um, basically, if you come in contact with one, um, you are in big, big trouble, and psychologically, you're going to be destroyed just from the horror of it. So I'm going to do a few more designs of this one, because I don't want to look too Junji Ito, but um, definitely Ito was a big um, influence on the piece. But that that said, I want to make it clear to people that are just getting familiar to my work right now, I've been doing this style of art for about 12 years, so this isn't anything new for me to work in this style or to um, do these types of pieces. And this is one I finished last night. Sorry, it's falling. Um, but, um, these are, um, the, they're the black gypsies, these three characters, and, um, they're not the major villains in the book, but you definitely don't want to run into this crew. So there's tons and tons of detail. I think for people that are fans of Miura, are fans of, uh, Sutomo, Nihei, any of the great manga artists, I really think you'll enjoy my book. Um, it will be in color, but I'm going to release the black and white version too. Sorry, let's get to the book that arrived from Japan. I'm going to pause this for one second, get the book ready to go, and uh, let's do this. What are we going to do? We're going to open that book. And it literally just came from Japan this morning. Splatter. Kind of blending all my styles right now. It's an interesting process of taking... Um, you know, multiple ideas and influences and inspirations and trying to, um, you know, like have everything settle in. But okay, let's get to this. So I think falls. I have on my computer screen. can see a little better. All right, hold on. Hey, what is up, everyone? It's Rich. All right, so welcome back. Um, I'm also, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mailing list today. So in the link, the description box, I'll have a link that you can um, contact to get on the mailing list um, to be notified when Blaster Kid launches. Um, and like I said, if you're new to my channel, please, please subscribe. It would mean so much to me, honestly. I would really appreciate it. So let's open it. I, I like It just came. I know people like to hear the sound of the book opening. I'm going to take an X-Acto knife and be very, very careful. Just poke it. I actually take real good care of my stuff. I have books from even when I was a kid that you'd be, people go like, how do you have this thing in such good condition? I take good care of my shit. That's how, that's how I do it. If I could get this stupid thing. Watch me completely like mess this book up now. There we go. Um, yeah, so I, I uh, saw this on um, eBay. Well, no, I, I, someone asked me about it and they said, Hey, can you, can you get, um, the, the, the book that is, um, I can't remember what they called it. Uh, but this is from a show in Japan, I believe. 
there's two. There's a red cover one and this. I have them both now. I haven't done a video for the other one yet, but um, I'm new to Kentaro's work. Look, I'll be honest. I, I had seen his work a year or so ago, really liked it, and just had not had time to um, really get into it. And so I started reading Berserk um, a couple of weeks ago, got busy with my own work and wasn't able to continue reading it. But I've read like 250 pages of it. And um, it's exciting and really, really fun, very inspiring to me. And it's just, you know, I have there's so much that I get from really good manga. And I've always been a fan of it and just always been so excited about um, how great the black and white work is. So it's a big, big deal to me to not only be able to have the opportunity to finally do my own book, but to, to just really have the ability to... Um, create a world, you know, create a world and characters like these artists that I'm so impressed by do. It's very exciting. I was joking with um, Kelsey, my colorist, and I was saying, like, it's it's so fun how you, you know, you have a story and you create a world and then you're just able to introduce all these amazing characters to to people that are reading it and get it follow these long stories. And I've, I really felt it was incredibly important to read Berserk going into what I consider my life's work, you know, honestly, I'm not, I'm not just saying that it, it's that big of a deal. So, or, you know, that, that, that much of a commitment for me. Man, this piece is so awesome. Sorry, I thought my camera stand is kind of hitting this. I need to get like a longer, um, whatever you want to call it, a camera holder. <laughs> The one I have is long, but it's like, I swear books always bump against it. So I didn't really come to YouTube, to be honest, to do book reviews. It just sort of happened. Um, but um, it's something that I enjoy looking at the art. Really can't see it when I do the um, the videos, to be honest. I have to watch them back just, just like you to, to see it. I mean, obviously I can look at the book, but I, I generally will watch the video again. Um, let's skip around just a little bit. Oh man, look at this. But yeah, so so you know, one thing that I'm always drawn to in in manga is the the use of value, meaning the gray and stuff like that. And I'm not a huge fan of wash with color work. So because most manga is printed in black and white, there's an advantage of that the the gray is never colored. And what I always found is that just doing lines um, colors the best. Whereas anything that's pure gray and then you stick color on it, it can, can it can look a little muddy and a little soft, and it's not really an aesthetic that I like. So I was I was been trying to come up with ideas and techniques that create a level of gray, but don't literally put gray mess. It's beautiful. Now, again, because I'm not super familiar with the whole story, I don't know if this is extra art. Some of the work in this book I know is collected from personal works. Um, of Kentaro, but I don't know if all of it is, and this could very well be a spread from the book that everyone that's read it has seen a million times. But I know that that, that like they they actually had his original art at the show. There was a big thing. You can actually, if you look on on YouTube, you can find some people that did video tours of it, which was I think um, one of the ones that I watched was uh, a tour that a guy did. It was really fun to see. And just incredible to be able to imagine that you could see his amazing work in person. I apologize if my hands are dirty. Again, I've been, I've been, I literally worked 40 hours the last three days. I've been putting in some insane um, drawing sessions, but to, to, I just am so driven to do this. I'm so excited, you know. Man, that stuff is kick ass. It was funny when I was when I was drawing, I was dying to look at some art because I like I felt like I've <laughs> I was like I've used every technique that I actually have in my mind right now. I'm like I like I had no more um like rendering patterns and stuff like that. And I was like, I need to look at something new to come up with like another idea or two. This is like feeling depleted, but that's what happens when you put like 400,000 lines on something. Man, this is a beautiful piece. This would be a great ta like tattoo or something. Again, I apologize for the glare. I was hoping that this book wouldn't be on glossy paper, and it actually isn't. It's it's very high-quality paper, but it's not a super glossy. This moon is beautiful, too. 
Now you see all this like nice rendering. Those are effects that I really, really want to get. It's funny because I'm going to do a bunch of character drawings next. And um, I really am racking my brain right now in terms of like how I'm going to deliver the detail on them because there's a look that I have in my head. And I'm, I'm like, you know, like I have to figure out what lines that I'm going to use to do it. Because I have, I call it like, it's sort of, it's influenced by a Tomo. What I mean by that is, what I always liked about Akira is the backgrounds were very, like, immersive, and then the characters were a little more simplified. I think that that's a pretty effective way to tell stories, but you want to balance too, this is great. You can really see the detail. Man, I wish that they would reprint the whole series, like, with this quality. I mean, the books look great, too, by the way. I'm, I'm, I have the deluxe. I have the first two deluxe books now. I remember seeing this one in his video. I thought this was a really cool piece. I was doing splatter on the last piece that I did, and when you do splatter, I don't wear a glove or anything, and so my hands were just covered in black ink. <laughs> What's funny, too, is after I did it, I was like, oh, man, I wish I had frisk it. And then I remembered that I actually had a roll from, like, years ago. And I, I went and I actually was able to find it. So next time I can actually mask things off a little bit. But I just blasted, like, the whole bottom of my piece with splatter to give it a little bit more grit. Um, but uh, next time I'll be a little more cautious. <laughs> I don't know if cautious would be the right word, but okay, so let's see here. Yeah, how many of you have picked up this book? Let me know. I'd be curious to know. It'd be, it'd be fun to know. But yeah, I, I was. It was funny. Is when I posted a, a piece, someone said that it reminded them of something. And I don't remember if it was Berserk or whatever, but was it was definitely something that I was a fan of and I was like, oh man, that's cool. Like they're they're getting the vibe. I mean when you when you bring in Junji Ito isms in your work, it's obviously gonna be very noticeable because stuff is so distinct and so weird. But um like I said, I'm gonna do a, a little bit of a tweak on those kids. I don't I don't think I want to have them look just like right out of a Junji Ito comic, but that was heading the right direction for sure. I've seen this piece before. I actually, I've done a video um, where I, I showed this, but this is so wild. Oh my God. So crazy. And and then this was another thing that I got from Kentaro is, is to not be afraid of violence in my book. Um, you know, I, I think that, that done in a dynamic way, it can actually be cool, but sometimes in books it's sort of frowned upon, but. I'm really curious to get deeper into the story. I might actually try to read like a hundred pages of it tonight to get a little further into it. This book, I think in this video will get me, get me going that, that route. Cause I really want to keep going. Oh man, this is beautiful. This is really cool too. But rest in peace, Kentaro. This is cute. Really nice little painting. Oh man. Oh, this book is good. <laughs> Rendering, I mean, I know I know that uh, later in Kentaro's career, he did bring out some assistance, but I'm not saying that they render the stuff. But when I was working on this, the last piece that I did, I mean, I spent hours and hours and hours just rendering the walls, throwing hatches. I mean, it really takes a lot of time. I mean, I was, I was literally in the back of my mind going like, you are crazy, dude. <laughs> but it's what you got to do if you want to get that look. You know, there's a lot of different w patterns that you can use for cross hatching. Um, but, uh, you know, 
unless you're gonna do it digitally, which I, I work traditionally, so um, you know it's just something that takes time. But you know, at the end of it, you have an original piece of art, and that's actually really, really cool and fun. Those pieces took me though, honestly, like about thirteen to sixteen hours to lay out um in pencil and then another you know 16 to 20 hours to ink maybe a little more the the last one i did i think took almost 40 hours um but uh yeah you know and there was a lot of like even as i was working on it i was erasing stuff and redrawing it i tried some of the stuff five or six different ways before i settled on things i had a face that i was going to show and i decided it looked scarier just completely blacked out I had considered hair on one character and took it off and just, you know, like little things like that, you know. That sort of cool. It's all like graphite. This is a great piece. Yeah, this guy is such a really great artist. Oh man, this is cool. <laughs> That's really cool. Sorry, I bumped the camera thing. This is a big book. This is about 200 pages. So, it, I mean, we're, we're going to probably see 30 or 40 pages of it. I'm going to skip around just a little bit here. This is really amazing. Um, but, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to put this back. Um, yeah, it's, it's big, big and crazy. Sorry, there's not, there's just not enough space. My camera is, it, I don't know why it does it. Um, when I go to record, it automatically zooms in. It's really annoying because the shot before you hit record is perfect. And then when you hit record, I've Googled it too. It's just something with my iteration of the phone. But yeah, it zooms in immediately. It's super annoying. This is great. See, and this is, this is one of the challenges that I face when you, when you do character driven work, one of the things you have to decide is how much you're going to render on faces. I, I generally don't render at all on faces with, with a big shot like this. You kind of need to though, but um, yeah, you almost have to create like a little bit of a rule book in your mind of like, at what point does the detail drop out on the faces? And what you'll notice is even with someone like Kentaro, if he draws his faces smaller, there's a high likelihood that he doesn't put any detail on it. Now, he may put shadow, but he may not hatch. And then when you zoom in on a face, then the hatching starts to show up more. This is a really great piece. But I haven't looked at enough of his stuff and, and looked for that specifically in it to know. And, and he may also pick up the slack on that with things like... Um, screen tone where he can he can light the faces with screen tone because this has screen tone on the face and a little bit of rendering on the face too and the eye sockets and on the cheek and stuff like that but that's not like hatching hatching you know what i mean that's just showing a little bit of the skull look at the, the pant leg and boot is awesome I actually got pretty, like, I almost consider it lucky, but, like, the the sleeves that I drew on the piece in the graveyard, um, those are some of the best, like, sleeves that I've ever done. I was, like, really kind of tripping out when I finished it. I was like, damn, it actually looks like you know what you're doing, which I kind of do, but, you know, I'm still a little bit of a wild, wild card. <laughs> it's like... It's like the like it's like you have the force and then you you get distracted and then the ball falls and you you had it levitating but but that comes back more and more as you draw more so and it was it was cool as Kelsey was kind of saying that that's sort of the fun of my stuff is he goes he goes you don't look like you're really that concerned about drawing things accurately but you get the point of it down and I'm like yeah I mean that's exactly how I'm approaching it is I try to show the best that I can. And then suggest the rest so that people can use their own imaginations on it. Seems to work. This is really cool. I've never seen this piece. 
But yeah, for aspiring artists, you know, it's like if you've got like a bag of tricks, you know, you, you know, anatomy pretty good or you draw fists pretty good, whatever it is, you know, what I mean, highlight that in your work. And then the things you're not as good at, you know, you can kind of try to downplay until you get better at them. For me, I'm pretty good at monsters and big, scary spaces and stuff. Kelsey's texting me right now. He's sending me color um, versions of uh, a piece. It's very exciting. I'm like, I feel bad because he probably thinks I hate it. <laughs> It's like he's not replying. What's going on? Man, this is great. The lighting is killer on this. I'd never seen this piece. I feel like I'm like, I, it won't spoil the book for me, but yeah, this is like, oh man, this is really cool. So what are we at? 17 minutes. We'll go two more minutes. He's still texting me. <laughs> He'll laugh. I, I'll tell him to watch this video. <laughs> I keep seeing like the messages pop up. It's just making me laugh. It's like, Rich, should I not do red? You can do red, Kelsey, red and blue. <laughs> just no magenta. No. <laughs> I always joke that magenta is like a very powerful color. And when you use it, you really kind of have to use it sparingly because it can really um, take over a piece quick. There's probably other colors that do it too. He's gonna laugh so hard when he sees this video. Yeah, so this is really exciting. I'm, I'm like, I, I the other book that I have is more like animation storyboards, and I don't think that they're drawn by Kentaro, but it, it still looked really good. But I think it's from one of the, um, one of the like animated series. I'm pretty sure it's a pretty highly respected artist, though. They look, they look really good, like super solid and stuff like that. Oh, this is so cool. Yeah, so Kentaro is kind of like he's he's one of my my uh, role models going into Blaster Kid level of commitment. I love the fact that people love the story of Berserk. That really is a big deal to me, and something that is like paramount to to what I'm working on is I want people to love the world that I've created and really really enjoy the characters and the stories and the adventures that they go on. It's so important. Oh my god. But yeah, I need good role models. So if there's, I, I know everyone's been telling me that I need to read Vagabond and um, oh, there was a couple of others. But yeah, if you have any recommendations, let me know. I'd be more than happy to um, consider them. And, you know, obviously any of these series, especially if they're long running, are a huge commitment. So I'll do my best. Oh, man, that is really cool. So what time are we at? 19 minutes. Okay, I'm going to go because I have to actually edit the video um, and put... Um, oh, shoot. Sorry. Uh, but I'll put... Um, oh, this is great. I'll put um, a link to a mailing list sign up for you all and get that set up. And then um, I won't spam you, though. To be clear, you're not going to start getting like a bunch of like ad shit for me. When Blaster Kid launches, you'll get an update that you can go and get on the like official Indiegogo um, notification list and then, um, you know, maybe one or two other notifications, but I promise you that I will not just start sending you like a bunch of random shit that will not happen. All right. So we're going to end it on this one. This is going to get a little bit of like a Frazetta vibe. Sorry, you guys have a great day. This is a very, very fun book. I'm excited to actually be able to check this thing out like a little bit more, um, comfortably, but I, I hope that this was fun to look at. I apologize for the glare. I'm trying to see if I can book in an angle where it won't glare. But um, yeah, so all right, you guys have a great day. This is, here's the cover, The Artwork of Berserk by Miura Kentaru. Now, I was curious about this too, if anyone knows, um, why is his name spelled different here? And, and on Instagram, when I did um, hashtags to promote the video, I only saw about 300 um, spellings like that is listed. So that was interesting to me because this is an official book. So I don't know if he shortened his name um, for comics or something like that. But anyway, and then here's the back cover. Really, really nice. Man, this is a great book. I'm very, very happy to um, own this. So you guys have an awesome day. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. And I will be back very soon. Okay, bye.